It's now time for the wrap up morning show, and it's coming your way right now. Five, five, four, four, three, three, two, one, one. We have ignition. Strap in. You're about to listen to the hottest sounds, and you've got it. Sorry. Try it now. This pumps through and explodes into your ears. I just feel like dancing. Well, it's just, you know, raw and, and pumping, you know. We play all the hits. Sitting in the sun, good cocktail, hanging out with friends, chilling out, it's a good thing. Yeah, you listen to 102.DLG Radio. You're locked into the morning show on this very special Sunday evening, well it's not Sunday really, it's actually, it's a whole other day, what can I say, it's actually Tuesday morning here at the morning show, let me go ahead and just say thank you guys so so much for your patience and uh, giving me the opportunity to come at you live uh, this coming morning, hey listen, we got a great show for you this week, this week we're going to be talking about how to get into broadcasting and how to make it very, very easy, very simple uh, to, to just get your foot in the door to, to getting into the, the world of broadcasting and, well, should I say radio broadcasting and podcasting. I'm going to go ahead right now and uh, take a quick moment before I go ahead um, and, and, and actually get into the show. We actually got a couple of birthdays right now. And uh, I want to like to take a quick moment and wish my good friend uh, goes back with me to all the way to high school, uh, actually elementary school, damn, elementary school, which is a very, very long time, a uh, long time ago. I want to take a quick moment and wish uh, my good friend, uh, Angel Rosado, a very happy birthday. Happy birthday, man. I, uh, I wish you about the best. And um, also want to wish uh, my little brother, Dorito Cedeno. Uh, happy birthday as well. So, uh, congratulations to you guys. And I hope that you guys have a great, great birthday, man. Mine's is coming up in just a couple more weeks. I'm hitting big 3-9. My last and final year in the 30s before I got to actually hit 40. So, yeah, I'm not really looking forward to that too, too, too much, if you know what I'm saying. All right, guys, so let's not waste any time. I want to go ahead and let you guys know that today's show is brought to you in part by our great friends at Nextcast. You guys are looking to get your... Free automation software, free trial for two full weeks. Listen, we use Nextcast here on the broadcast each and every single week. And we have a great time uh, using this software. It is so easy to use. So easy to use. That even you can just pick it up and use it like without any proper training. Listen, you know, a lot of times you get people who say, you know, I got to go to broadcasting school and do this and do that and do this. You know, you got to have this kind of software, whatever. But listen, Nextcast gives you the easiest way to get started with your podcast or your music radio uh, broadcast that you guys are doing. Listen, whether you broadcast for 24 hours a day, 27 days a week, or whether you just, you know, do a two hour show, four hour show, six hour show a week, whatever you guys do, listen, head on over to our official website www.102dlgradioorlando.com and click on the next cast banner. And this is what this is going to do is it's going to give you two free uh, weeks free trial and if you guys like it next cast is going to hook you up today. Yeah, I said it next cast is going to hook you up today and they're going to give you they're going to give you the software if you become interested after 2 weeks for only 150 bucks. You cannot beat that. You cannot beat that. That's an amazing price because, listen, I've said it over and over and over again. Listen, radio automation software programs can cost thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars 
for a pro professional radio station, especially for those of you guys who are trying to get your feet wet and get into broadcasting. Hey, you can't beat it. Next cast is going to give it to you $150 after the two-week free trial, if you like it. Now, for the tr free trial, you don't need a credit card, you don't need any of that stuff. But however, if you like it, pick it up, man. I, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, also, too, um, if they do any type of updates or anything like that, they got to give you, you know, those updates for free. They're not going to charge you like other automation softwares or video broadcasting softwares out there that say, hey, you know what, you pay this one-time fee, and you're going to have to keep paying, keep paying, keep paying, keep paying, and then next thing you know, you're broke because you can't afford to do anything else because you're paying so much damn money on this broadcasting software. Not, not, not with NextCast. NextCast, they're going to give you two free weeks. Two free weeks. Then they're going to give you a great deal if you enjoy this software. 150 bucks today. If you guys like it, all you gotta do is go on over to our official website www.102dlg radio Orlando. Again, click on the next cast banner and they'll get you started today. And uh, let them know that 102dlg radio Orlando have sent you. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get into the broadcast that we all here are waiting for. Listen, for months and months and months and months, a lot of you guys have been sending me private messages. You know, on, on social media, and then you guys have been, you know, writing it to me on YouTube. You know, a lot of you guys know I've done some, uh, some, some YouTube uh, tutorials on how to get into broadcasting. Uh, of course, you know, I want to actually start getting back into doing those tutorials again. So, because listen, I know there's a lot of people out there who want to get into broadcasting and don't know the ways to get into it. You know, about getting, you know, music licensing and all that stuff. And I want to be able to go out, go ahead, and be able to help you guys. So today's not going to be one of those crazy type of shows that you get on Sunday. I wanted to kind of be a little bit informative to you guys this week. Uh, of course, today, you're going to get a double dose of our broadcasting because you're going to get the morning show right now. And then later on tonight, you're going to get the weekly rundown with myself, the professor, Michael Benson, and of course, the Iceman, Kevin Tapey. And I want to just uh, take a quick moment and thank both of those guys because those guys have been very, very awesome. Uh, joining the program you know we don't get paid for doing this broadcast we don't get to you know go out there and, and make the big dollar dollars like a lot of people out there so you know we do this for fun we like to have a great time doing it yeah you know we do have a little bit of a part we, we have some partners and we have people uh, that help uh, kind of put this program together to make this you know make us or give us the opportunity, let me just put it like that, give us the opportunity to broadcast to you guys each and every week. Listen, it started off, when I first started doing this broadcast, I had to put my own money into it, and, uh, you know, we're growing, we're growing pretty, pretty, pretty well right now. Uh, we're already at a half a million. We're looking to get to a million. Uh, we're really, really going to try to push it this year to try to hit that million uh, mark uh, for our listeners. And listen, we're looking to expand. We're looking to, uh, we're, we're looking to, to go into new places, go into new homes that we've never been into. We want to go to different countries that we've never been into. And we want to be able to just, you know, not only bring you live broadcasts, but we want to bring you bigger and better podcasts as well. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, we'll get into all the the fine details about broadcasting in just a second. Um, but again, I want to take a quick moment and thank the professor, Michael Benson, and again, Kevin the Iceman Tapey, because... You know, I'm crazy, and, you know, from time to time, I, I could be a pain in the butt, but uh, they are great guys, and uh, I couldn't have a better team. And, uh, listen, we're looking to grow our team. We want to be able to uh, bring on uh, more shows. You know, I know uh, Kevin the Iceman Tapey is looking to do his own podcast, and, look, you know, maybe we can bring him on once he starts doing his podcast. Uh, we can bring him on and start adding him to our radio show website. Um, to You know, he's looking to get into some travel type stuff. I'll talk about, uh, you know, going on cruises. He's doing blogs and stuff, guys. And uh, uh, once we get more information from Kevin uh, on what he's doing uh, with his blogs and stuff, we'll, we'll go ahead and break it to you guys because, listen, he helps us out a lot, and we got to be able to open the doors and help him out a little bit and uh, try to, you know, try to, try to, try to help him out in whatever ways we can because that's just who we are. And, uh, you know, we got to show love to the family. You know what I'm saying? We're all a big family here now, and uh, we got to do whatever we got to do to support our family, right? That's how I say it. That's how I see it, and I hope you guys see it the same way as well. All right, guys, let's um, 
go ahead and let you guys know before we actually get into the full show tonight at uh for the weekly rundown we're gonna do something a little different we're gonna kind of be doing a kind of relaxed uh type of broadcast this week um we're gonna be piloting more than likely and i kind of guarantee you uh i'm gonna get harassed tonight by uh professor because uh, something special happened a couple of days ago and uh, we'll talk about that in a little while uh well not a little while but a couple hours from now uh, i'm sure professor is gonna rag me on it but it's all good. A very special moment took place uh, this uh, this past week, and uh, man, I couldn't be any happier. And uh, with that being said, uh, we're also going to be uh, doing some uh, beer testing tonight. Beer tasting tonight, or beer testing, a beer testing. I can't even talk right now. Um, so I'm, we're I'm, we're all going to choose two different beers, or one or whatever, however the guys want to do it. But we're going to choose two different kind of beers, and uh, we're going to go ahead two different kind of beers that we've never tasted before. That we want to be able to try and see if we even like. Uh, so, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'll have my two. Professor will have his two. And I'm not sure what Kevin's going to be doing. But um, we're all going to, have to do some beer uh, tasting. And then we're just going to kind of talk and just kind of have a good time tonight. Um, we're not trying to be, you know, outlandish or any of that nonsense. We want to be able to have fun this uh, this week. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm only about uh, two weeks away a week and a half away from going on my cruise uh, to the Bahamas with the girlfriend, and uh, just kind of, just kind of want to be able to, uh, just kind of sit back and relax. I want to have to focus and drill my head into, you know, major subjects the next two weeks or so, so uh, a week and a half, whatever it is. Um, I haven't really decided yet if I'm going to uh, do any type of broadcast or pre-recorded broadcast before I go on the cruise. I have to talk to the guys to see how they feel or what they want to do. Um, but we'll keep you guys updated on that. And if not, then, hey, we'll just take a week off and we'll just kind of sit back and I'm going to enjoy myself and let the guys enjoy themselves. Uh, but if they, if they want to do a, a live broadcast or, or pre-recorded broadcast, we'll go ahead and do that too. And uh, we'll, we'll have it, you know, brought to you guys uh, on all of our networks. But with that being said, let me shut up now and uh, go ahead and get into why we are here this fine morning. By the way, if you guys are tuning in for the very first time, thank you guys so much for the love and support that you have uh, have been giving us since we've been on the air. Listen, we're going, we're going into our five-year anniversary. Five freaking years. How amazing is that? Doesn't get any better than that. Listen, we're going to be doing a very special celebration. On Let me go ahead and get the correct date here. Uh, I want to say is May. Okay, Saturday, May second, at ten. I'm sorry, Saturday, May second, at 11 p.m. We're gonna be celebrating our five-year anniversary. Uh, we're gonna be broadcasting all morning, or all through the night, going into the morning, and uh, we're gonna be bringing on uh, the professor, and also we'll be bringing on Kevin Tapey. Just kind of have some fun and just kind of. Uh, just kind of have some fun and uh, play some of your favorite tunes and stuff and just kind of sit back and just, you know, just have a good time, y'all. All right, so let's, go, let's, not, let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and get into the show and why we are all here because you guys are going to say, oh, well, he's talking too much. You know, I want to get into the show. I want to learn about broadcasting. Well, that's what we're going to do here today is learn on how to get into broadcasting. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of give you a background on who I am as, and how I got into broadcasting for those of you who are tuning in for the first time. And a lot of you guys, if you guys have uh, heard this in the past, then you can just kind of tune out for a moment and it's okay. You guys can come on back. Um, but, hey, you come on back in about five minutes. How about that? All right. So, okay, so my background is, of course, I started uh, DJing uh, many, many years ago, over 20 years ago. And uh, got my, that's how I got my start uh, into broadcasting is getting my feet wet. I started DJing, learning about music and mixing, you know, kind of learning with the beats and all that stuff. Now, a lot of you guys who want to get into broadcasting don't really want to play music or you don't want to get into DJing and all that stuff. See, I, I do everything. I do the whole hosting. I do the whole music thing, the DJing, all that stuff live on the air uh, for you guys each and every single week. You know, but some of you guys just want to be able to... You, you want to kind of have uh, the host, you want to be able to have, you know, your your your, your DJ, you want to be able to have your producer and stuff like that. And, you know, and our team is slowly growing, and like I said, we want to be able to grow even further uh, to have a bigger team. 
and I see that happening uh, soon enough. Uh, you know, we're trying to uh, to recruit uh, more people to join us on the team, and you know, which is it's just always fun to uh, to bring people on who want to learn about broadcasting. And it's funny because the professor was one of those who uh, he's who's my friend for you know five years. I've known him about five years already because um, we used to work together. And uh, he wanted to. He came to me a, a few years ago saying, "Hey, listen." Uh, I know you do a radio show uh, and podcasting, and I, I want to uh, I want to join, and I want to kind of just see where we can go with this. Um, and of course, he had no experience or anything like that. Of course, you know when he did his first broadcast, he knew nothing about broadcasting whatsoever. So I brought him in and kind of just showed him the ropes. Let me tell you, I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, his his his. His actions and how he portrayed himself on air, just you just would have been like, oh my god, I'm so bored right now. But you know, the truth of the matter is, it takes practice to finally find your comfort uh, zone when broadcasting. You gotta find your character. You gotta find your niche, your spot. And then once you find that spot, you become very, very comfortable. And uh, I gotta say, you know, within the past two years, the professor has grown a lot. He's grown a lot, man. You could kind of see, you know. Some people sometimes they kind of feel bored uh, with some of the topics on the show, and sometimes you guys just get a kick, a, a, you know, a hell of a kick out of what we talk about on the show. You know, sometimes professor could talk a little bit, but it's all good. You know what I'm saying? I'm just messing around. Uh, and then you know, so he came on and he wanted to join the team, and so two years later, he's he's doing a lot, lot better. He's 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 finding his niche. He's got his character, his persona. And he's doing great. Now, Kevin, on the other hand, Kevin joined the team uh, just a few months ago. And let me tell you, the difference with Kevin is he's had a little bit of broadcasting experience. So when he comes into this, he has he has the lingo. He has the speech. He's very clear in his pronunciation. Listen, I know sometimes when I speak, I'm not clear on what I say. Sometimes I mumble. It's just, just who I am. You know, it, it happens from time to time. I find myself stumbling over things. But... Uh, Kevin, uh, the Iceman Tapey, he, he came along and he fit perfectly because, you know, we we found we found a gimmick for him. We found his character, and which which is not far, you know, long from who, who he really is. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, everybody used to call him in high school the Iceman, and we just kind of stuck. And uh, you know, Kevin's just fit perfectly into the team, and we've had. Nothing but tons and tons of fun on this show. So, you know, I'm proud to have two great guys on this broadcast who I can say I appreciate very, 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 very much. All right, so let's go ahead. For those of you who want to get into broadcasting, you guys need to know a couple of things. First, got to figure out what kind of broadcasting you want to get into. Usually, I recommend getting into podcasting. Just so you can kind of learn your way around, uh, kind of just build your material and at the same time, you want to be able to. Okay, let me go ahead and put it this way. Sometimes people want to get into podcasting so bad or broadcasting so bad that they will decide, hey, you know what? I want to start off and I want to do a two hour show. Well, the honest truth is, I do not recommend doing a two hour show because sometimes you don't have material. You don't have enough material to. to uh, you know, to to kind of uh, keep you busy for two hours or to entertain your listeners for two hours. Listen, when I first started doing this broadcast uh, or, or got into broadcasting, I started off doing 30-minute broadcasts because I kind of wanted to learn the software, what I needed to go. However, this wasn't, you know, really too new to me because... You know, like I said, I, w I started off DJing, and I was very familiar with audio. And then uh, from 1999 up to 2005, which was close to six and a half years before I moved to Florida, I worked in television. I worked in a television studio at Sound Soundview Community Media, uh, which is located in Bridgeport, Connecticut, at 211 State Street, the fourth floor. So if anybody ever wants to get into broadcasting and you live in Connecticut... Soundview Community Media will get you certified. Uh, they will help you get your feet wet. You know, everything has changed over the years. I uh, had a great time working with the company. Um, you know, we, we had a great, great team uh, when we started out. 
And uh, by the way, I want to take a moment and say hello to Steve. Uh, who else? Uh, Miss the Booby Queen, Miss D. I uh, want to say hello to Oscar J T Morales um, or Larea. Also want to say hello to uh, Donna Sue Luther Blackwell. Uh, also to just the rest of the crew who used to work with us. You know, Ricky Mestri, uh, great friend of mine's. You guys were a great team. We had a, we had a lot, a lot of fun over the years uh, broadcasting on television. And listen, I got to tell you, I, I I really do miss it. I miss having the the old school crew, man, because we used to always have fun. We would go into the television studio. Uh, usually we would have like a three-hour time slot or four-hour time slot, I'm sorry. Uh, we would go into the studio. Usually I would write all the broadcasts, you know, at home, and then I would go into the studio to broadcast them, and I would usually usually we would we would record or go live, um, but usually I would at least have two or three shows ready to broadcast or ready to record to to put on air. Um, and I did that yeah once or twice a week. So I'm you're looking at anywhere from you know three to six shows being recorded you know every single week. A lot of people don't realize this, but when you work in television, a lot of the stuff is pre-recorded. Um, but for us, well, when we worked in, in, in at Soundview, we needed to have at least twelve shows. Uh, are pretty much uh, like a like a season. You know, twelve weeks was considered a season for Soundview, so we needed twelve shows recorded before we can actually air live. You know what I'm saying? So, usually, if let's just say, if I if I recorded a show today, and if it was edited, that, speaking of which, that's another process. Because uh, I did it all. I did the hosting, the writing, and all that stuff. So, getting into to broadcasting is very easy. You know, and I love the hell out of it. The hell out of it. But, um, but it becomes a little tough when you have to tape six shows a week. And then you have to go in and edit all those shows and make sure they're ready for air. So I would broad, I would tape one show today, and then it would air tomorrow. And I our shows aired uh, once a week. Um, and usually it was Tuesday nights at nine or nine thirty. It started I think it was nine o'clock, and then it went to nine thirty. Uh, we did great. We had a, we had tons and tons of listeners and followers and all that stuff. It was awesome. Um, and then you would just continue the same pattern every single week. And uh, at first, I'll tell you, it was really, really tough, but it can become a, a hell of a lot easier, you know, over, over, over time. But then, of course, I, I moved to Florida and I said, listen, I want to get into broadcasting again. You know, I tried to go, uh, you know, apply for, for Disney World and I, and I went to go apply for Universal Studios. You know, I was like, you know, I want to keep the acting thing going, but I want to get into broadcasting. I want to get my foot in the door with Disney and I wanted to do this with Universal. And of course... It's a lot harder getting into broadcasting uh, down south, and Disney World is very, very strict on on, on what they're looking for. Because you got to have this image, you got to be able to, you know, be able to have so much uh, broadcasting time and ex broadcasting experience before you can actually go working for a company such as Disney or whatever. Um, so I went ahead and uh, decided, listen. When you go work for a major company such as Disney or Universal or any type of broadcasting network or radio station or whatever it is, commercial station, when you work for a company like that, you cannot, you cannot have that freedom to talk about what you want to talk about on the air, let alone, you know, be able to have that freedom to broadcast when you want to broadcast. You know, yeah, you know what? I, I I have three shows that I do here every single week. But if I want to say, hey, you know what? I want to take the day off. And I don't want to broadcast today. Or if, or if I say to myself, you know, I want to I want to broadcast an, ad, an additional day. Or if I want to broadcast two hours, I want to extend and go five hours. Or if I want to do a twenty-four hour broadcast. Or if I want to raise money for for our radio network, then I'm going to go ahead and do that. I don't need permission. I don't need the FCC. I don't need any of that stuff. 
it becomes very, very tricky. I don't have anybody over me, you know, over my shoulder saying, hey, you can't be doing that. Or, hey, you know, that's just not right. Or you need to step away from this. You need to get away from that topic. You can't talk about that. I have my own freedom. So when I moved to Florida, I said to myself, I want to get into broadcasting, into radio broadcasting. Yes, you know, I had that experience for six and a half years in television, and I wanted to go ahead and finally kind of play around with getting to podcasting and radio broadcasting. So I did my research, and I'll be honest with you, I, went to, I just went straight to YouTube. I went straight to YouTube, I did a lot of Google searching, and um, then I just started to learn about podcasting. And I mentioned this a little while ago, but you guys get so excited about getting to want to, getting to podcasting and, and try to broadcast live. I don't recommend broadcasting live right away, whatsoever. Try messing around. Do a couple of pre-recorded broadcasts. Do thirty minutes. Just kind of. You always want to do thirty minutes because that's enough for yourself. To kind of sit back and listen back to how, after you're done recording, that is, go back and listen to what you've done. And then, if it doesn't sound right to your ear while you're, you know, while you're doing these test broadcasts, then it's not going to sound right to other people's ear. So you want to kind of just kind of play around with the 30 minutes, and, and you know, we here at the show, you know, I like to do half-hour segments on our program, and you notice that. You know, we jump around from different subject to subject. Sometimes I do every 15 minutes, we'll jump around to different topics and stuff. That's what I recommend for you guys. If you're doing a 30-minute podcast, just messing around, do 15 minutes. Of, of I'll just keep it simple. Don't go overboard and don't, don't go rambling too damn much because people get bored very, very easy. Especially if you're going to be talking about... You want to be able to bring something to the table to where you, if you, you want to have your focus on what topics you want to stick with. With the program, you know, with us, you know, we do entertainment news, we do hot topics, but we also do very informative uh, things in our program, which help educate you guys. Um, and that's why, you know, and that's what we do here. But you know, I like to give you guys a variety, and I like to bring you guys music, and I like to do just different things. So, if you guys are gonna get into broadcasting, thirty minutes is a great way to start. Thirty minutes will go by like this. Uh, usually, I recommend doing multiple 30-minute uh, uh, testing broadcasts. Just pre-record them. And there's a lot of programs out there that we're going to talk about here on the show that will help you out just to get your feet wet. And a lot of people think, listen, when I get into broadcasting, I need to have this, this, and this, and this. Honestly, if you want to have a great sounding podcast... Or radio show you need to have good equipment which means you need to go out and kind of maybe spend a little bit of money to make sure that you're bringing that beautiful sounding uh, you know that beautiful sound across to your listeners because listen I use here a blue Yeti a microphone and actually, when I first started out, man, I had headsets that had microphones on it. And I realized, oh my god, it sounded so crappy. You know, and you get the crackling a lot, and if you're breathing, you can hear it in the microphone. I've been there. And I still have my original headset that we used when we started broadcasting. And sometimes you kind of got to spend a little bit. So then once I started to learn about some of the things that I needed for my broadcast, I started looking into microphones. And of course, then I, I, I started using a regular handheld microphone, and that was on a little stand, and it was like, you know, I talk into that, and I was like, oh my God, this doesn't sound good either. So after doing some research, I realized that the Blue Yeti microphone was my best bet. Yeah, it's a little bit pricey, uh, and you can probably find them for you know, pretty decent price if you do your research. You know, if you look around on Amazon, you go to eBay, you know, of course, watch where you're buying from because if you get a crappy unit and that doesn't have... I always look for the great feedback from a seller. If there's great feedback, then I will go ahead and purchase from them. Uh, I want I want to be able to see when I'm purchasing some of my equipment that 
if something goes wrong with my product, they will offer me a refund or an exchange. Usually, if you get somebody who says, well, you have a, 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 one, a one week exchange policy, then I'm not going to go with that person or that company who's selling the product. So, from my experience, the Blue Yeti microphone is what you guys can see here. And I'm probably going to update this pretty soon because as we move into our new studio, I want to be able to use some uh, other condenser mics, which Professor uses on his end, which works really, really well. Beautiful sound. Um, but this Blue Yeti uh, microphone, uh, I believe I got it uh, by luck uh, a few years ago. I went into a computer store and uh, they had all this stuff. And I'm in the heaven when I go to, uh, to, to, to these stores that have all this PC software and all this stuff. And I'm just like, oh my God. I become like a huge nerd because over the years, I have learned so much about you know PCs and and how to I can fix my own stuff uh, here on the air you know if something goes wrong on the air I can, I can jump to it and I just fix everything myself for the, from the broadcasting software if something crashes or whatever it is I do it all myself I do all my engineering stuff myself because I if I went to somebody else I'm gonna be spending too much damn money and uh, sometimes you kind of need to learn about you know the software you use you know your PC you're using your unit you're using you know your soundboard your all that stuff you want to learn about all that stuff because if something goes wrong you want to be able to jump on it and kind of just fix it yourself because if something goes wrong you know if you bring it to a company and they charge you all this arm and leg uh, you know spending hundreds and hundreds and thousands of dollars on, on getting your stuff fixed let alone you spending all this money on, on pro software or equipment and if, if it goes down I mean you're spending this money and you bring it to a fix and then all of a sudden you're, you're spending more money than you need to so you kinda gotta be smart about things learn about what you're using your software and listen I'm pretty good about helping people out if they have questions and stuff like that I like to help people out in, in any way that I can so I highly recommend getting a Blue Yeti microphone. And like I said, I got this on a deal because uh, they had a sale a week prior, but they forgot to pull the tag off the shelf. And I want to say I believe that the original price for this Yeti microphone was 160 bucks, And it's a USB-powered uh, microphone, which works awesome. Um, now... When I went to go get the microphone, I saw the, the label and I called an employee over and then I said, hey, listen, um, your price tag says 60 bucks. And the guy's like, no, 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 no. Listen, it's uh, it's 160 something bucks or whatever it is. I'm like, I'm sorry, but I worked in retail a long time. And if you don't pull your tags uh, for a sale, then they must give you give it to you for that price and then of course they gave it to me for the price and I wasn't being obnoxious about it anyway or anything like that but um so that kind of helped me out so that saves me a hundred bucks right there 60 bucks you can't beat it and it's a beautiful microphone you guys can hear how awesome it sounds right now um, and then it gives you the option on this Yeti microphone to kind of where you want to pick up the sound you want to pick it just in front of your face. You want to pick it up from all around the the room. You got different settings on this microphone. Uh, usually below uh, the unit, uh, it gives you the option to where you want your sound to come from. So if you want that end stereo sound, if you want that mono sound, if you want to just be able to pick up what's happening in front of you or around you, you can do that, and that's and that's an awesome thing. So I highly recommend getting the Blue Yeti microphone. Uh, also, too, with some of the things you guys are going to need, uh, which is very, very inexpensive, are these Radio Boom uh, stands. And if you guys uh, see over over there, uh, you guys can see I have two booms here in the studio. And these two microphone booms help me with my broadcasting because these are, these are very, very awesome. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and explain why. 
because when you're broadcasting live and you have like a little microphone stand in front of you, like a little stand that you know with a cheap cheesy microphone stands, and you got <laughs> gonna talk to it like that. And uh, sometimes if you're moving the table, you're blocking to the you know bumping into the table, that all comes up on the microphone, and it kind of sucks because I remember when I started broadcasting, I did a lot of that. And I was like, oh my god, it annoyed the crap out of me. So I kind of did my research, and I was like, oh my god, where can I get those Radio Boom uh, stands? I'm going to tell you. These microphone stands, you can find some great, great deals on Amazon. Amazon.com is the place to go, because they are one of our partners as well. And uh, we have actually worked a new deal with Amazon, and uh, we are so grateful for them. Oh god, so, so grateful for these guys. Uh, but we'll talk about that later. Anyway, so you can go to Amazon.com. And you can pick up these boom uh, mics, uh, mic stands, or broadcasting stands. Listen, they're only like maybe 15 bucks a piece, or 16 bucks a piece if you look around. Now, if you look around a little bit harder, you would find a, a package deal where it comes with a microphone and the stand for only like 30 bucks. That's what I did with the professor's microphone on the other end. It came with the uh, the windscreen. It came with the uh, the stand, or should I say, the microphone arm, broadcasting arm, and it just clips to a table, and that's it. You just hook the microphone up to your 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 PC unit or your your broadcasting unit, your audio board, whatever you guys are using, and then you just set the audio to where you want it, to where it sounds good to you, and uh, that's it. I mean, so, for my stand, this is one of the stands that I started using when I first started broadcasting, and the microphone, between the microphone, uh, the stand, and the just, you know, the, and then I got these microphone flags, uh, you gotta do some research if you wanna know where, where you can get them, but the microphone flags, you, I think, believe you can get it on Amazon as well. And they're only a couple of bucks. They're like nine bucks. Uh, but you got to put your own logo and design on it. And of course, you know, it's very easy. If you have your own printer at home, you could do, you can make wonders. Um, but I, I, I got my microphone, uh, my stand, and then my uh, flag. And then getting my logos printed. Man, I think I want to say between all of that right there. Before I even knew about other deals and stuff like that, I probably spent about... I want to say maybe about 150 bucks, which is not bad. But once I learned, you know, how to work deals and where to find certain things, listen, I got professors uh, stand the uh, the flag and his microphone for only like 40 bucks. That's a huge difference. So it just depends on where you guys want to go with your program and how many hosts you want to have in studio with you. Because I do have the professor in studio with me uh, when we broadcast on Tuesday nights. And let me tell you, it works wonders. Works freaking wonders. Uh, and then, of course, uh, I went ahead and uh, went from there. I said, okay, I know what, what sound I wanted. And I kind of messed around with the audio settings and I got what I was looking for, you know, I, it took me a lot of time to kind of, you know, I needed to mess up, you know, with my broadcast, and there was times where I had technical issues and stuff like that, it happens on air, when you're learning about new equipment, you're going to have those flaws, you can't be, you can't expect to be perfect in any way, all right, so once I went ahead, I said to myself, okay, what else do I need for broadcasting, if you want to start a very simple podcast or radio program depending on how many people you need or how many people you plan on having a studio with you I say keep it simple first start a podcast or radio show by yourself um, kind of learn you know it's very simple to hook up a microphone and connect it to your your units your, your you know your soundboard or whatever it is uh, and of course, there's tons and tons of tutorials up on uh, on YouTube for you, and uh, we have our tutorials up on you on YouTube as well. Where you can look us up. Just look us up under the Latin Groove Radio, um, and I'll pull up our tutorials. We got tons and tons of videos. Uh, but again, please hit that like subscribe button so we know that you guys enjoy what we do here. Uh, because we, the more subscribers and more uh, followers we get, the more you guys inspire us to bring you uh, bigger and better videos. 
All right, so let's go ahead and get into for the more advanced uh, people out there. Uh, when I first started broadcasting, I only had one screen, and one monitor, as you guys can see here. And by the way, if you guys are watching this broadcast or listening to this broadcast right now via audio, you can actually come on over to our official website, www.102dlgradioorlando.com, and you can catch the live video broadcast of, uh, of this tutorial. And speaking of which, this tutorial will probably go up on YouTube as well later on this evening, so you guys can actually check that out as well. Because I know some of you guys, and one of our great friends, Kevin Tapey, like I said, he's looking to get into uh, broadcasting as well. And he said, hey, listen, is this going to become a, a podcast later on to where I can listen to it or archive? I said, yes, of course. Uh, but honestly, I highly recommend uh, going in and uh, and watching video. And watching the audio and listening to the audio, whatever whatever you want to call it, but um, because you guys kind of get more of a visual of what we use here on the show. All right, so I started off with one monitor uh, many many years ago, and uh, that became tough for me because there were so many things. I would have like five uh, tabs open here with between software and uh, watch, trying to watch chat rooms, and I realized, oh my god. My internet speeds is not the greatest, and I'm trying to run all this stuff, and I, I started to see my windows crash, uh, my tabs crash, because I didn't have enough uh, power or internet to run all these tabs. So I kind of went ahead and did my research, and I said, hey, listen, how am I going to be able to run all these tabs all at one time? Boom, did my research. I expanded two monitors. Mm -hmm. So I got my right and my left monitor here, which I call monitor number one, monitor number two. This is my main monitor over here, if you guys are watching. This is my main broadcasting monitor, and mainly I have my my audio being fed through here, and usually, you know, if I have any type of, uh, any type of, uh, what you call it, audio devices that I want to uh, have during my broadcast, I have it all set up in one window. And then in my other window, which is over here, which is my monitor number two, I have my main audio board, which is brought to me via Spreaker. Now, I really don't use this as much as I used to. Um, however, it's a great starting point. It's a great starting point because you can have... Uh, Spreaker allows you, and again, please guys, head on over to Spreaker.com. It is www.Spreaker.com, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. Um, go on over there, because Spreaker, uh, you can sign up for free. And when you sign up for free, you can listen to thousands of, of podcasts and radio broadcasts, even live broadcasts. Um, they will allow you to broadcast on your own for 30 minutes at a time for free. And uh, the best thing about Spreaker is we've been with them for five years. So they know us really, really well. Um, and of course, when Spreaker came along many years ago, uh, yes, you know, they were a new site. They, they were having some issues, but Spreaker has come a long way. Uh, their sound quality is awesome. The they Okay, so... If you guys want to get to broadcasting, let me see if I can go ahead and pull this up for you guys. So you guys can actually see what I'm seeing. Um, I don't know if I can try this. I'm going to go ahead and try to pull this up audio-wise and video-wise for you guys. Uh, let me go ahead and see if I can pull something down. Let me go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick screen capture. This is my parental advisory. Please be 18 years old to listen to this broadcast because we are not responsible for your actions. Okay, but go ahead and do this. Go ahead and do this. Bam. Okay, so this is for anybody who's tuning in right now. You guys are going to see. You're going to see a quick screen capture of Spreaker. So you guys can see. So let me show you this. So this right here. Now I'm leaving my mouse up here so you guys can see. So this right here is the Spreaker chat room. So when you broadcast live, 
your listeners and everybody can come in and you can react to them while you're doing your live broadcast. Now, for this is for just the basic people who want to get into broadcasting and, and podcasting. It is very easy. As you can see, we are live on the air. This is the on-air light. This tells everyone and tells me specifically in studio that we are live on the air. Um, of course, we since we are sponsored uh, by our Heart Radio and Spreaker, we don't have to pay for any type of broadcasting fees. So we don't have a limit to our broadcasting, which is freaking amazing once you get your feet wet. Uh, let me go ahead and try to fix this because it seems like I got a little bit of whatever. All right, so let me go ahead and all right, there we go. All right, so this is the Spreaker Council. Uh, and for any, and I highly, highly recommend using Spreaker because Spreaker gives you an awesome way to connect to your listeners. And then once you kind of learn your way around Spreaker and the soundboard, you can connect you, your broadcast to other networks, which is amazing or amaze balls once you get into, you know, learning your way around. All right, so. Um, basically, we have the, we're going to start over here. First of all, when you go to create your podcast or your radio broadcast, as you can see, we're live right now. The morning show, live, episode 22. Um, and then it gives me, excuse me, broadcast live, which, which I'm doing right now. You guys are seeing the live broadcast as we go. And then it gives me the non-stop live program, which allows me to broadcast for 24 hours straight, constant, which is amazing. Or it gives me the option to record a new episode, which I highly recommend. So if anybody's going to uh, try to mess around with Spreaker and its audio board, listen, I recommend using the third option here, which it says record a new episode. And it'll give you 30 minutes uh, to kind of play around with your audio, kind of, you know, kind of gives you the option to kind of listen to what you recorded, which is an awesome thing because you always want to hear yourself back. And I highly always recommend this. Always go back after you record your podcast or whatever it is, go back and listen to it. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. You may flub around a little bit. You might jump around. You might stutter. You kind of might jump from topic to topic and you'll be all over the place. And it's going to happen. It's okay. All right. So this is our microphone, uh, our microphone uh, leveler right here, our audio board portion. So this gives you the option to, uh, of course, you can see while I'm talking here. That my audio is, uh, my input is capturing uh, via speaker. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and mute uh, my sound so no one can hear me, and if I'm just saying I'm playing music via speaker, you can, or whatever it is, whatever sound effects you guys want to play, your commercials, whatever it is, you can. Uh, basically, if I wanted to mute myself, let's say I had a guest in studio which I'm thinking about going back to doing this again because uh, I've been having some issues when I like when I, we talk behind the scenes I gotta go mute everybody out and we kinda like can't conversate but anyways I'm gonna get this figured out anyways um, you can go ahead and mute and then you kinda carry a conversation with your guests you bring your guest on I uh, will show you how to go through all that as well and then if you click on the settings button, which I'm not going to do right now, because if I did that, it's going to give me huge feedback. And that's the last thing I want to do. But if you click on your settings, it's going to give you the option to use what audio input you would like to use for your microphone and your speakers. And in this case, we're using um, our audio, virtual audio cables. And our virtual audio cables... Um, Oh my god. Virtual audio cables can work wonders for you. So if anybody ever wants to uh, broadcast any type of uh, sound from your computer or you want to bring in a live phone call, 
use virtual virtual audio cables because it listen it's it's only a couple of bucks to purchase and then once you learn how to use the virtual audio cables you can bring in live callers you can do a lot of lot of stuff you can bring in callers from Skype uh, you can feed in live audio from your computer itself into the into the software it's great stuff but anyways we'll get into that more advanced down the line and I wanted to keep doing more of these tutorials uh, as we go but I don't I don't want to overwhelm you guys too much uh, for this very first broadcast alright so and then you get to choose for your microphone the quality you want to come out so you want to do high medium or low we keep it high because we want our quality because our computer or our unit or soundboard can handle uh, the uh, the audio of being high so we want to get you that nice radio crisp uh, sound okay so this right here this next box is our deck number one uh, usually what will happen is uh, and of course these are not highlighted because I don't have any sound running through them right now but if they were live if I was to load the deck um, and this is what you do for example if I wanted to load my deck one or deck two, and then, and it just gives you the option here. I'm gonna show you guys real quick. You can mute your sound. Right now it's muted, but if I click the unmute sound, that's gonna bring up that deck. Now you guys are gonna ask, what about if I want to bring in audio from Spreaker? Very easy, very very simple. Of course, this is your monitor. If you just want to listen uh, to your, you know, the music before it actually goes over the air, you just can hit the monitor button and you unclick it, and then it'll go over the air. Of course, this is your play. This is your stop. This is your, of course, your your volume. Usually, I just keep it on the red, on that red line that it gives me there because that just shows me don't go over or above that line because your audio quality will probably be horrible all right so I'm gonna go ahead and mute this so let's just say I wanted to go ahead and uh, and bring in audio for this deck okay what you would need to do and this is your playlist box here it says no media currently load it click on the add button to search in your media library right now I shouldn't have anything in there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the add right here and it's going to give me the option to explore what's in the Spreaker uh, archive. Uh, so I can search by artist. And these are just, you know, just independent artists that you can bring up. Or you can search your your media if you had anything here. Just to see if I was looking up. And it's not going to come up anything. But I'm just saying, oh, we're going to search Madonna. Which, uh, you just click that. And then you look under songs, and then you would hit enter, and then all your media and stuff will come up right here for you guys. Alright, so I'm gonna cl and click that X and it just deletes it out of the thing. Okay, so then, and then I'll just tell you what's the latest uh, stuff that I have in here, audio wise. So let's just say I wanted to bring, and this is a perfect example, I'm gonna go ahead and do a uh, royalty free. We'll go ahead and do this. I'm going to add the weekly rundown soundtrack. Okay? So I'm going to click on the plus sign. Now it gives you the option if you want to hear it, just click play. And it should be able to come up. And as you guys can hear, that's a very well known sound. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and hit. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the add button here and once it loads which is already loaded immediately because I have quick internet service which brings it up to where I need all right so let's just say if you wanted to upload your own stuff so you would hit your open music library and you would just go the screen will pop up over here and then it's gonna give you the option to go ahead and load your own audio uh, stuff or music or commercials whatever whatever you guys want to do and this gives you your jingles you can do your loops and each one is going to give you the option to 
load sound effects but I want to upload and it's going to give me the option do I want to load music do I want to load a jingle do I want to load a loop do I want to load a soundtrack or an effect in this case let's just say if I wanted to load music I'm going to click on that and it's going to open up my library and I'm going to go to my library choose the music and then I'm going to hit open and it's going to load it and then you just go ahead and add it to the uh, to the you know to your your library but I'm going to get out of this so I'm going to go ahead and hit close so now I have my audio here and I'm going to go ahead and double click and it now pops up in this window over here I have the intro and that will now play when I'm ready let's just say if I would click that off no one can be able to hear this on the air it shouldn't well it will now but because um, the way I have everything set up here you may uh, be able to hear it over the air but this is where I need to do is when I click the speaker off but I want it to monitor my audio from that tr that that play deck I'm just gonna hit play and it plays for me but when I'm ready for it to go over the ear I'm just going to click off the monitor click the speaker to where it's ready to broadcast and then once this window lights up in blue you will be able to just hit play and it's not gonna play right now because of the way of my setup but that's pretty much how it works guys and then let's just say if you don't want this one anymore uh, you just click these this X over here that's on the end and it'll delete it from your box and then if you want to go ahead and, and delete this guy uh, it's been a while since I used this over here anyways um, so you're, you're able to load as many um, audio files as you can they give you a certain amount of storage now the cool thing about uh, Spreaker is that they give you the option to uh, they give you the option to for if you guys are getting into broadcasting they give you the option to um, a certain amount of storage that you guys can use and they're awesome they're amazing uh, like I said, we've been with them for five years, and it's it's awesome software for you guys to use for your broadcasting. And it's one of those uh, it's one of those websites where hey, it's gonna save you money in the long run. Um, if you guys want to kind of play around with the board and stuff like that, we highly recommend checking them out. Um, great, great software for broadcasting. And uh, like I said. We are sponsored through iHeartRadio and through Spreaker, so they, they pay for us to broadcast, so we don't have to pay any fees or any of that stuff. So we have unlimited time. We can broadcast, uh, you know, if we want to broadcast two hours or five hours, but our minimum we can broadcast is, you know, 30 minutes or whatever it is, or 10 minutes, however the hell we want to do it. But we can broadcast up to 24 hours if we want to. And uh, so I highly recommend uh, Spreaker. Spreaker is amazing uh, to to kind of use to kind of get started and get your feet wet, and it gives you the option too. It says, "Hey, if you want to build your your your, your listeners, you can always uh, incorporate your social media to share on Facebook." If I click that share button, it's gonna go right to our Facebook page and say, "Hey, listen, we are now broadcasting. Come listen to us. Hey, all that good stuff." Um, so again, for anybody who's interested in getting to uh, get into broadcasting, um. I highly recommend uh, checking out Spreaker. Spreaker is an amazing, amazing software, and uh, we highly recommend them. Uh, we 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 get a lot of uh, we had nothing but great experience with 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 Spreaker. So that's a nice way to get started. And I know a lot of you guys um, are looking for the easiest way as possible. And I'm telling you, Spreaker is the easiest way to go for broadcasting. Um, now I want to go ahead and uh, show you guys uh, one of our other sponsors let me go ahead and see if I can pull this up uh, Nextcast um, Nextcast is and I, I know you guys hear us talking about Nextcast all the time and we're gonna show you Nextcast is a very great uh, way um, great software to use and it's very easy to use I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play anything on here but I just want to kind of show you the format of what it looks like let's go to this real quick and this is Nextcast uh, this is their software 
and uh, as you can see um, they have everything that you need. You got your automation software buttons, you got your settings, uh, you got your deck one, your deck two. And these are all just all my libraries, which you know I need to reload up. Uh, gives us some sounds. Let me see. And it, and it gives you the option here. And this is, we'll get more into death within the next couple of weeks when, with next cast. Uh, but next cast gives you the option to title your music, you know, the year and all that stuff, and you can listen to the playbacks. And then, of course, I got all my independent artists labeled here. Uh, and then you can just build your playlist uh, via the show. You just click and just drag everything that you need. Um, so the, uh, next cast is a great, great thing to use once you keep become a little bit more advanced in broadcasting. Um, there's still stuff we're still learning about next cast we haven't got into uh, you know we're still loading up tons of our music in you know, our station promos all that great stuff yeah, um, so we we have a lot to kind of uh, learn with this broadcast and they're just recently updated it so we're kind of still messing around with it and uh, learning that but we're gonna do a whole tutorial on next cast uh, within the next couple of weeks uh, because you know our sponsors want us to show you guys that we are working on some great great stuff all right so let me go ahead and uh, go back into studio here let's see so we're back into studio uh, so great great ways to get started very very informative stuff I hope you guys uh, kinda got a little bit out of today's broadcast but we, we got a couple more things to talk about I'm not gonna leave you hanging just yet so to get started in broadcasting keeping it very very simple Spreaker.com is what you guys want to start uh, with getting your feet wet they, they give you again you sign up for free Spreaker.com and they give you for broadcasting software to get your feet wet is a control or audio control uh, system here to where you can use for your broadcasting needs again don't overdo yourself start off 30 minutes once you get comfortable listening back to yourself and you kind of play around find your niche and then you kind of want to start doing like little promos here and there to kind of just some voiceovers get people to come do some voiceovers for you and then just kind of learn to build them into your radio broadcast because yeah you know what and then once you 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 find your niche you want to go ahead and you know, maybe once you get very very comfortable then I would slowly move up to 45 minutes uh, for your broadcast and then do an hour once you become very 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 advanced then hey if you feel comfortable doing two hours or whatever it is for your broadcast or four hours whatever it is then go ahead and do it but don't overdo yourself right now for any beginner trying to get into to broadcasting or podcasting 30 minutes is what I recommend because, listen, I've been doing this broadcasting thing uh, with radio five years, but prior to that was television, like six and a half years, and the total 11 and a half years of broadcasting. You kind of kind of run out of material after a while, so you kind of got to know uh, what to talk about and not where to want to ever go back and kind of re-talk about things because people get bored. So you always want to keep it fresh. You always want to keep it simple. But the most important thing is, if you want to talk about a specific thing on your show, like your format of your program every single week, so whether you're doing video games, or if you're talking about uh, entertainment news, or hot topics, or if you're doing what's happening in your community, government, whatever you guys are messing with, or the ideas you have, you want to stick with that format each and every single week. Because, listen, honestly, there's an, there's an audience out there for everything. Now, you may not get a lot of listeners, you know, the first, you know, year that you're broadcasting, and that's okay, because, listen, when I first started broadcasting on Spreaker, man, I only had one or two listeners, and I was like, it's so devastated, I was like, man, where, where are the people going to start coming in and listen to our program, and it takes a little bit of time, it takes a little bit of time, um, we didn't start really getting a major hit in our listeners until like the second year. You know, we, we started playing around with the different formats, you know, the different topics to see what people liked. 
and that's where our audience started to build. Uh, before we went ahead and we deleted our old speaker page, we were at like, oh my God, where were we? We were at a hundred. I want to say a hundred and like fifty fifty thousand followers. That's amazing. And then of course when we changed our name, you know, we had to go back in and 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 and, and create. Since we changed our radio network from the Latin Groove Radio Show to one hundred two point DLG Radio Orlando, um, we kind of got to try to say those followers, hey, come follow us over here. You know, this is our new. Our, our, our new speaker page and whatever so we're slowly building our listeners again and uh, you know it takes time just just be aware you may get frustrated there's gonna be times where you're gonna be like oh, you know what I don't know if I really want to do this stick to your guns and I promise you it'll pay it's it'll pay off in the long run I promise you um take chances that's the most important thing have things that you want to talk about sometimes you know some people like to be spontaneous they like to be a little crazy in the radio um, and that's fine build your character build your persona and make sure you stick to that now I don't want to advise you to go out there and, and be a prick or whatever it is on the air because listen yeah you know what some people like that but only you only a certain amount of people are really, really going to enjoy what you're bringing to radio. And if you're going to be a prick on the air, it doesn't always work for everybody. Um, so just kind of know what material you're going to bring. Uh, see what your followers like. The most important thing is to getting your broadcast out there is to always, always push. Uh, you got to push yourself to... To getting people to listen to your program. So if you got your family up on social media, got your few friends, whatever it is, every time you broadcast, you want to go ahead and you want to let your friends know, hey, listen, I want to be broadcasting. I'm, I'm trying this new thing out. I want you to come in and listen to what we do here. And in the long run, it, it'll build itself because then now your family would now share your link with their friends and then their, their friends will be like, oh my God, look, so-and-so's uncle or whatever's doing this or niece is doing this and... You want to build your audience. Again, keep it 30 minutes. Keep it on topic. Uh, build your audience. See what they like. And if it doesn't work, then move on to something else. Go on to another topic or another, uh, you know, another format that's going to not only interest you, but interest your listeners. You never, never, ever want to talk about things in your program that you are not comfortable with. Because if you're not, because I'll, I'll guarantee you, you're not going to be into it. You want to talk about stuff that's going to keep you interested in the long run. But in, also in the long run, that's going to keep your listeners coming back each and every single week. Now, I don't recommend broadcasting each and every single day. That will get too tiring. You'll burn yourself out. And in the first year, I recommend doing 30 minutes once a week, kind of just playing around with things, and then just go ahead and expand from there. Once you become more comfortable, once you get to learn your software and all that stuff, then you just go ahead and expand. All right, so don't, I don't want you guys to think, you know, broadcasting is not for everyone. It is not for everyone. And understand that there are going to be issues, there are going to be tech issues, and not everyone's going to like what you put out there. And you got to kind of take it with a grain of salt and just kind of say, hey, listen, if you don't like what I do, that's fine. Just go on to the next radio broadcast, and that's cool. You're probably going to get those people out there who are going to say, oh, my God, your show sucks, man. Yo, why the hell are you broadcasting? Oh, my God, you, your face is ugly. Oh, my God, your, your voice sounds like a chick or whatever it is. Just let it go. Keep doing what you love. And you, there there are listeners out there for everything. So, you kind of got to play around a little bit. Alright, so, we, we talked about a little bit about some of the software that you need. Of course, you need a microphone. You need, you know, a microphone boom arm. You need your flags. Uh, if you want to make it look professional. Of course, the most important thing you need is your headphones. Your headphones is the main priority because you don't want to have speakers in studio that's broadcasting live 
while your mic microphones are live because what's going to happen is you're going to get tons and tons of feedback hence the reason why we use the headphones here in studio we used to use the little monitors but however they kind of get a little bit irritating from time to time and i just want to be more comfortable so i got us a you know a set of uh earphones for myself and the professor we're so much better um we are actually working on some uh, new speaker system here in studio because uh finally after four and a half years the speaker system we were using kind of kind of went kaput so we kind of went out there and got some new stuff which will be here within the next couple of days uh, that's gonna help us uh, here in studio uh, for the sound quality and uh, we'll show you those once they come into studio but the you know and, and I try to be the cheap El Cheapo and I, I should have learned my lesson I went to uh, a store here in our area and I said you know I'm gonna go give me some $10 speakers just to kind of help us out for right now because you know we're, we're, we're kind of on a budget kind of make things work and let me tell you it's the worst ten dollars that I ever spent the speakers are crappy as all hell and uh, I can't wait for our new speakers uh, to come in into studio because oh my god that's one thing I want to tell you right now if you want to have a quality show you want to make sure you have quality equipment so whether it's the microphone you know your, your your speakers your headphones you want to make sure that what you're gonna buy is gonna last you for uh, you know years to come luckily our very first speaker system last four and a half years worked tremendously but then you know as, as it gets older you the wires be moved around and stuff and you, you kind of get shorts in the system and it happens uh, so sometimes you gotta go out there and you gotta kind of fix things and like I said you guys need to learn to go ahead and fix things on your own rather than go out there and have somebody pay somebody to come in and fix your equipment it's gonna cost you way too much money please be aware that if you want a professional broadcasting or you know a radio broadcast or a podcast you need to spend the money I think uh, over the years I have probably spent probably like fifteen hundred dollars on what you see here in studio in total and that's including software uh, you know the monitors and you know and I'm every you know every couple of years I like to upgrade upgrade my, my system because hey listen your things they can only last for so long you wanna be in with the times in the software and you wanna make sure that whatever you're using for your broadcasting uh, software that it comes off professional you want everything to sound awesome you want your visuals to come off awesome on screen and listen we've we broadcasted in some shitty quality excuse my language oh, what the hell is this is the morning show we we broadcast with some shitty quality for video in audio it's happened in the past but that was a learning process so we got to kind of see what works for us and what doesn't and you know sometimes you you're gonna go out there and you're gonna buy audio equipment, you're gonna buy video stuff, and you kinda gotta do your research before you purchase anything. See how, you know, look up tutorials. See how this is gonna work for me. How is this going to benefit my program? Do I really need this? Is this going to help, um, is this gonna help make my sound quality come off professional to you, the listener? The other thing I recommend to, and I'm going to say this with all due respect, start off with audio only broadcast podcast. Don't do something, and I and I've made the mistake doing this, and I'm going to share this with you because, to me, um, I pushed myself a little too soon, and I kind of find myself. Um, kicking myself in the ass in the long run I said to myself okay I want to start in broadcasting and podcasting whatever it is uh, radio and I want to go out there and I want to have audio oh my god I started to love and I, I learned everything that I needed to learn about audio and then I said hmm I wonder how I can combine video broadcasting with audio so I want to expand really quickly that was the wrong thing to do because now I have to not only teach myself audio, but now I'm trying to figure out how to get myself 
broadcasting via video, which is a whole nother ball game. So usually I recommend, listen, keep it audio only right now. Do it for the first year or two. And then once you're willing to start learning about building, uh, bringing in a video into your broadcast to where people can see you live in studio. Because listen, you're going to need alternate software for your video. We used to use, uh, we used to use a program and I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to know what this is. We used to use a program called Wirecast uh, when we first started broadcasting. Uh, when we got into video, uh, when we broadcasted like on three networks or whatever it was, we used Wirecast for about a year and a half, two years. We went to Wirecast and we said to them, would you, like, would you guys like to sponsor our program? Remember, we're still fresh, you know, we're in it two years, going into the third year. We're still learning the process. We went to Wirecast. We said, hey, listen, do you guys would like to sponsor our program and donate one of, you know, the Wirecast software? If you want to donate the Wirecast software to our, to our, uh, to our radio network. And I'll tell you, they we got a negative. No, we got a nope. Sorry, nope. Mm, so we're not interested. And it's gonna happen. So we went around, and then we looked at some other video software, and uh, we used the free trial of Wirecast. We we did our little bit of editing to kind of get it to work for us, and then all of a sudden, when we started to expand, we um. We couldn't, uh, you know, when we started to expand on multiple networks, we were having issues with Wirecast. So we just kind of let it go. And um, so we, we just, I'm sorry, I was looking at something that was going on. Um, then we kind of just went ahead and said, hey, you know what, we had to look for all, our, our, an alternative uh, broadcasting software. So we did that, and we looked at... Uh, XSplit, and we currently use XSplit right now, and uh, as you can see, we, we bring you great, great quality, and we're very, very happy with XSplit, uh, and then we also looked at some other stuff, and we're just like, eh, you know, that doesn't really work for us, we want to be able to have multiple cameras, and be able to do this, and do that, or whatever, so, Wirecast is, uh, we don't use Wirecast anymore, we use XSplit. So if you guys are comfortable enough to where you want to, and I don't recommend it, but if you guys become interested in doing video broadcast, I highly recommend using XSplit. Uh, comes off really, really well. Uh, hold on a second. I got Mike the Professor Benson calling in the show right now. Let's see what he wants. Yes, sir, Professor. What's that? I'm actually on the air right now. You're on the air with me. <laughs> That's okay, bro. That's okay. What's going on, brother? Hey, call in. Hey, uh, when we do the drops tonight, let's uh, let's get the vanilla ice background, ice ice baby uh, theme, and Iceman can come in with Iceman baby, Iceman baby. You're and, uh, <laughs> yeah. So he can throw Iceman, and he's saying he can throw Iceman in there where it's ice 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 baby. That'd be a good, that would be a good thing for his opening as he's doing his uh, drops. You see what I guys? You see what guys? What I got to deal with with the professor? He just called me on <laughs> random stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it just came to me when I was reading the um, uh, the messenger message, and I was like, ah, oh, ice man. Oh, we need to get some vanilla ice going in this backdrop. Oh my lord! And then, and then, if that doesn't work, we can do. Uh, Top Gun, do a little um, thing music from Top Gun, because that's where the Iceman came from. The Iceman and the uh, Top Gun. So, his favorite call sign. Only on the morning show do you get the professor calling in talking about play some vanilla ice for our promo. Well, I figured I'd give you a 
little uh, a little ring when I had some time, and here I am on live. <laughs> Yeah, I said, you know what, I'm over here doing a tutorial, and I'm broadcasting, and I'm like, well, the professor's calling me, I'm going to go ahead and take this call, because, you know, it's got to be important. So I was like, what the hell, I'm just going to put him on air and see what the hell he wants. <laughs> it's always important when my phone rings. <laughs> yeah, that's what they all say. Yeah. So what's happening, what's happening, what's, what's new in the uh, neighborhood? Nothing much, man. We're just sitting here uh, for the morning show, and we're just doing some topics on uh, how to get into broadcasting and po into podcasting. Because I know we talked about this before about uh, trying to get people, you know, trying to help them out a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. And stuff. So that's that's what I'm kind of doing right now, just kind of talking to the people and just letting them know, you know, what software we use, you know, what's the right way to go. Uh, you know, just getting started in audio broadcasting. Don't don't jump and get all crazy like like we first did. Um, you know, with me doing audio and, and the video, you know, within my first two years of broadcasting, it just drove me nuts. Right. Well, you know, not everybody's you, so you know, you gotta they gotta understand that they gotta go with what feels good for them. And, exactly. And, and be and be themselves. You know, like you know, when I came on, you know, I was trying to kind of feel my way through, but you know, I just you know, once I realized I just had to be myself, you know, and that's what you know people want to hear then that that was great you know because it's just you have to find your little niche and just about anything you do it's like it, what is your niche and what you're doing and if you can do that you can be highly successful yeah and it's like I, I told them earlier in the show you know you know professor came along two years ago you had no experience in broadcasting you, you always told me hey listen I want, I want to get into you know the radio and, and the podcasting with you and I said hey come along and you just learned as you went and I was yeah. just and I was just telling everybody how you've come a long way, you know, you know, you were a hot mess when you first started, but you had a you had, you had to learn like how to come across on the radio, right, right, and talk about you know certain topics on the air because listen, honestly, when you go ahead and you 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 try to talk about certain subjects on the air, not everybody's going to be interested in what you're talking about. Exactly, you you know, and things that might interest you doesn't necessarily interest everybody else, and vice versa. Exactly. So, you know, you just have to kind of feel your way through. Uh, and, and go with the theme of what you're broadcasting. You may be a, a talk show where you're you're doing specifically the same type of topic every night or every week whenever you're broadcasting. Or you could be wide open and you talk about a lot of things. Like on the weekly rundown, we talk about everything on the weekly rundown. Exactly. Not everybody's going to be able to do that because they're not, you know, formatted properly to what's good for them. And I think that's a big key. Exactly, and it's just like I told everybody uh, there this broadcast as well. Listen, when you get into broadcasting, don't overdo yourself. Don't burn your brain. Listen, I've been broadcasting for 11 and a half years between the TV program and then doing this radio program. You kind of run out of ideas of what to talk about after after a while. You kind of just kind of sit back, take a step back, take a little bit of a break and say, hey, what? where am I going to go now? What am I going to do with this program? Well, you know, like I told, uh, told you the other night that, you know, we're getting, you're getting ready to go on break and you know take a take a little hiatus for a vacation and stuff and and you know what are we going to do for our next show before you leave and I you know like I said we we're I think as a show before and with Kevin we're at our best when we're when we're flying free when we don't have a topic and we just let everything go yeah and listen we we all have it'll be days where we have a great awesome freaking show and there's days that we're gonna be like well. That show was okay. It could have been better, but yeah. you know, it's like you said. You know, there's days we do a lot better when when we're playing our shows. Yeah, you know, it's fun and stuff like that. But there's days where hey, let's like tonight for tonight's broadcast. We're gonna be we're gonna be winging it. We're just gonna have fun, sit back, and it's it's probably gonna be probably one of the top shows that get gets listened to. So yeah, and you know, I uh, I, I I think that you know the thing about it the right time slots and everything else I mean it, when it was just two of us we were just flying but now we have Kevin and, and that's a great thing because you know he breaks up the monotony of both of us you know if, if I'm off on one night you know Kevin can pick up and if you're off we have to pick up you know, you know what I'm saying yeah you're not always going to be on your on your game a game when you're when you're on air just like in sports or anything else so you know you have that other person who picks you up and who comes in and and takes over, and you don't have to do it as much. You know that's always a good thing. And and, and somebody going on the air needs to realize that you know you're not always going to be on your A game every night. But but to be good, you have to still be consistent. 
Exactly. That's what I say. So, and then, you know, I was just talking to them about software that they needed and all that good stuff. And I said, hey, listen, when you get into broadcasting, into podcasting, do 30 minutes. Because you, the most important thing is, and I've always told this to Professor and to Kevin recently, I said, hey, listen, with you guys just starting out with this program, always go back and listen to yourself, you know, with the broadcast, because that's going to show you. If you sound freaking weird on the radio, you listen to yourself, you're like, oh, my God, I sound horrible. Just imagine how that's coming off to other listeners. Right, right. And that's and, and and you can kind of understand what you're doing wrong and stuff. And I, that's what I do. I'll go back and listen to it and say, you know, and you've I've told you before. You know, yeah, I need to do this differently because I, I can I can see how I'm coming across. You know, and uh, if you're not, you know, the old term, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. Kind of like if you're if you're not first, you're last. Exactly. Type of thing. Exactly. You know, so and you have to you have to want to get better every time. You know, you. you you can't go back to reverting to you know the beginning because if you do you know you're just out there spinning your wheels and you know the other thing too is do your research listen to other radio broadcasts out there listen to other podcasts see what you're doing I mean it doesn't hurt to take some people's ideas and just kind of make it your own uh, just kind of mix it up a little bit you know what I mean and it's just like listen broadcasting is not for everybody, for everybody it's fun you know, if you guys want to get into it, you know, it's fun. It'll pay off in the long run, but, you know, you just got to kind of play around with things. And nothing's ever going to be perfect. Right, right. And, and that's so true. But, um, true. so what's what's up for tonight? You, uh, you, you got your, 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 your burr ready? I'll go by and get some. I'm going to, I'll stop by the liquor store. I got to take my dog uh, to the vet here at 240. I gotcha. Have to, I had to go back up and take my car back up to the... The collision place, so I have to get. I'm gonna have to take it to the dealer tomorrow. Um, I have issues with, with issues with the clutch, so. But yeah, I'll be there. Don't yeah, I'll, I'll stop by when I get done with my dog and get some beer and come by. Uh, did you see the the ad I I showed you on Messenger the the link for Coon Beer? No, I have not had the chance to look at it because I was up to four o'clock in the morning doing voiceovers. Um, mm. And I was, yeah, I've been doing so many, so many crap things behind it, behind the scenes, trying to get things together. But mm, I think it's a micro brew company mm-hmm. that has a lot of different uh, beers. And it's funny because I used to drink a beer out of uh, when I was in Chicago. I used to drink a beer called Old Style, which is brewed out of uh, Wisconsin, mm-hmm. and it was pretty good beer. But you can't find it any place unless you're in that that area. And like I put on my notes last night to you, you know, when I put, you know, down for y'all that, you know, I drank so much beer in my lifetime all, from all over the place that it's hard to find a beer that I really haven't drank that is, you know, national. Yeah. Uh, like Bud Ruckers is a great place. Uh, they don't have them all over the place anymore, but Bud Ruckers, you could go in when you, they had a club and you, it was, it was called the Beer Tasting Club. And every time you go in, you would drink a different beer. Mm-hmm. And they would keep track of all the different beers that you had drank at the, at the establishment. Mm-hmm. And then after you hit 50 beers, you got a t-shirt. And so, then your name went on a board, and then you would drink, you continue drinking beers, and you kind of climbed up at the level of the club that you were in, based on all the different beers that you would you would drink. So pretty much you get shit face, and then you get a t-shirt. Well, no, you don't drink them all the same night. You you every time you go back. Oh, I got you. I got you. Every time you go back, you could go in because they had like a separate room with the beer taste. You know, the, all the different beers and stuff. And you could go in there and, and, and get your different beers and stuff. And then you know you could buy, earn points, buy mugs, all kinds of stuff. And uh, it was it was pretty cool. I, I used to love Bud Rucker. They still they had one in Tallahassee. I don't know if they still have one. When I was on the road a lot, and I would stay in a hotel overnight and. Uh, uh, Northwestern Florida up there I would I'd go to Fud Records and have a pretty decent meal and then I would have a few beers before I went back to my hotel room mm-hmm. and uh, and they had uh, you know I would taste so many different beers and then I was in Philadelphia when I was uh, working on the in the shipyards in Philadelphia Navy shipyards uh, we used to go to Fud Records all the time because it was right by the base and you know we'd go sit down and drink two three beers four beers you know and I'd try a different beer every time you know it's it, pretty cool but uh I'll see what they have at the liquor store because that, that the you know the regular grocery stores they don't have big selections. The liquor store might have some good stuff, and I'll see what I can find. Did you find anything? 
Uh, I'm actually gonna be heading out in a little while to go check and see what I could come up with. Cause yeah, I, I want to try to taste some uh, something that I haven't uh, tasted before. So we'll see what I what I can find. You might. Uh, have you had you ever have you ever drank uh, Yingling? I have not. Some people try say. Yingling. Some I, people. I, I, I drank some Yingling that my brother. My brother was drinking some Yingling. I tried some of that. It wasn't too bad. You might you might like to try that. Yeah, I'll see what I can come up with. Um. So I'm probably going to do like two beers and see what which one, you know, I like the best. And I drank another beer. My grandfather, when uh, he was diabetic and in, and in Pennsylvania, in Pennsylvania, they it's, it's really weird. You have to go to a state-sanctioned package store. You can't just buy liquor any place. Yeah. And they would have drive through and they had bottled beer. And then you would, you would get your deposits back in your beer. And he used to drink cases. Or he would buy the cases and... Uh, of Stonies, it was called Stonies, mm. but it was a, a diabetic beer. Hmm. It didn't it didn't raise your sugar, you know? I didn't and, even realize uh, that they had beer out there that was diabetic, you know, for diabetics. Well, I can't find it because that was pretty damn good beer. Mm. I used to like stuff, but I, you can't get it down here. It's all in the you know in Pennsylvania. Yeah. The, that that a lot of states brew their own beers, and that's kind of kind of hard to get a lot of those beers but you can order you can go online to all these different like they sent that website and you can order they'll ship the beer to you hmm well I thought they said that they were not allowed to ship alcohol via the mail UPS certain things you can get uh, via the mail though so if anybody wants to send us some free beer if you make home brew beer man we'll be happy to uh, to try it on the ship I would check into those guidelines and see how that how that's labeled. I mean, I know, I've i known of people going ahead and, and doing homebrew beer uh, yeah. and sending them out to other, you know, their friends and stuff. I'm on, yeah, so if anybody out there has, uh, that does home brewing, you know, with beer and stuff, we would love to taste your stuff. Oh, exactly. And you know, that it may be the, mi- the micro brewers could uh, send the ingredient and you do it yourself. I, there's got to be a, a niche to that, how they make their money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or they send you the blueprints on, you know, what the what the recipe is, and then you brew it that way. So I, I don't know, but there's there's got to be a way around it. But a lot of good beer out there, a lot of good beer. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a few tonight. Hmm. So guys, uh, with that being said, we're gonna get ready to get ready to head out of here uh, because I have a lot of things I need to do, do before tonight's live broadcast. Again, don't forget to tune in uh, this. Uh, this evening for the weekly rundown with the professor Michael Benson uh, the Iceman Kevin Tapey and myself DJ Friction uh, we're going to have some fun tonight man so if you guys are going to be tuning in again 7pm Eastern Standard Time we'll be broadcasting live we're going to be taste- doing some beer tasting and God knows what's going to come down hey don't forget professor you need the crazy t-shirt I need what? remember it's crazy t-shirt tonight I have to wear a crazy t-shirt? yes crazy t-shirt you wore that crazy hat last week <laughs> For anybody who missed the broadcast, you need to go to our official website and watch that rebroadcast. It's nuts. This guy showed up. Oh my god, it was nuts. Hey, I the the pictures I posted on Facebook of it. Yeah. I had like multiple comments from people in person. What did they say? What the hell were you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> the professor's always hogging the spotlight. And always remember, if you go camping. And you wake up. Oh, Lord. <laughs> what a condom sticking out of your asshole. Yeah, we know. <laughs> He's a freaking hot mess. Uh, yeah, I got you on that one. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're freaking nut. I was uh, I was golfing yesterday and uh, with my friend, uh, Dr. McClay, and uh, I said to him on the chorus, I said, so, and he looked at me. He knew I was coming with something. And I told him, you know, I told him a little, you know, joke that I, I gave you. Yeah. And he, and I, when I asked him, would you tell anybody? Oh, hell no. And I said, so we're going camping soon. When you, are you coming along? <laughs> <laughs> he just stopped and it hit him, right? It was just like, <laughs> you should have saw his face. Yeah, I think you should ask Kevin that question tonight. I will. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> Don't start laughing and ruin it, though. I'm, I'll, I'll try to keep a straight face. 
I have to put on my acting skills. All right, all right. Well, I got to go, and I'll see you guys tonight. If you're listening, uh, we, we look forward to having a great show. But if not, uh, catch us on YouTube and uh, watch our rebroadcast over on our web our webpage. All right, uh, Professor. We'll see you tonight, buddy. All right, man. All right. Have a great night. All right, all right bye-bye. Bye-bye. That was the professor, Michael Benson. And, uh, man, I'll tell you, we're going to have some fun tonight, man. We're going to do some beer tasting. Some beer tasting, babies. And uh, we're going to have some fun tonight, man. So come on by. Uh, we'll, be bro- we'll be broadcasting starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Weekend Rundown. Uh, with myself, DJ Fiction, the professor, Michael Benson, and the, the Iceman, Kevin Tapey. Hey, listen, I know Spreaker went out. Uh, their broadcasting dropped for a little bit, so I may have to come up and re-upload this broadcast later on to Spreaker. So I do apologize if anybody had any issues. And uh, guys, with that being said, uh, we will get more into broadcasting tips and tricks uh, within the next couple of weeks. I want to make sure that you guys are going to be getting all your information. You know, I wasn't expecting this phone call from the, from the professor, but you know, things happen on live radio, and uh, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Uh, but we'll get into more details on software and uh, just little things here and there to kind of help you guys out uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, but, guys, with that being said, I am your host, DJ Friction. And I'm going to take you take the time to say thank you guys so, so much for uh, coming by and spending uh, two and a half hours with me. Um, and with that being said, guys, I will see you guys later on this evening. And uh, you guys be safe. And uh, till next time, it's the weekly rundown tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the morning show. I will see you guys next week. Be safe, y'all. Much love. What's up, y'all? This is DJ Friction. I'm not going to start your own radio show. Come on over to Spreaker.com. That's right. I said it. Come on over to Spreaker.com and uh, listen to hundreds and thousands of radio shows, or you can start your own all for free. That's right. I said it. Come on over to Spreaker.com right now. They'll get you set up with our 30 minute free broadcasting account. Mind you, you can broadcast 30 minutes as many times as you want for free. Spreaker.com is where it's at. Other price packages are available. Let them know that the Latin Group Radio Show sent you. And get your radio show started today. Every day, millions of people are fighting for their lives. Many are walking around with this disease that is destroying you and don't even know it. Fighting to stay healthy. Fighting to see another day. It's called cancer. About one in every 20 Americans are fighting for their lives from breast cancer, lung cancer, colon cancer, to skin cancer. These are just a few of the major diseases that are attacking all of us every single day. Take the time to get yourself checked out at least every six months. It can save your life. It can help save others. It can help save others. Hi, my name is Michael, I'm Professor Vincent. You may know me as the host of the one or two DOD Radio Network. As everybody out there has, has listened to the show uh, knows and understands that I have been a three-time cancer survivor. And when it comes to cancer, I can totally attest to the fact that there's certain things you need to do. I fought for cancer all my life. Even though I've already beat cancer three times, every day is a grind. You must understand that in order to survive, you have to get proper help at the right time. That means preventive. That means asking questions. That means going to the doctor on a regular basis. Get in touch with a local physician immediately. Go to www.cancer.org, www.cancercenter.com. Once again, thanks, guys. Stand up to cancer. This is DJ Friction. Stand up to cancer. Hey, this is Professor coming at you. Stand up to cancer. Definitely cutting edge radio. The Chris Top Program. Thank you for your time.
Sometimes I think I push people a little too hard. It's because I want the best. Life is good. I'm gone. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will. <laughs> okay, so do you need some time to prepare or are you ready? Take it from the top. The Chris Top Program on Spreaker and PKN Radio. Life is good. And I am gone. What's up, guys? DJ Friction here to remind you, if you really enjoy what we do here at 102.DLG Radio, take the time to support our program by going over to our official website, www.102DLGRadioOrlando.com, and donate today. That's right, son of y'all. Go on over and donate today, and show your love for the show, y'all, and we'll keep doing what we do here. Much love.